This tutorial is part of our YouTube playlist, TriFlask API Development. So you can watch this course from the start if you prefer. Now, alternatively, if you enjoy this course, you can also purchase this course on Udemy, where you'll find deeper content, source code, and course updates. Links to both the playlist and Udemy course can be found in the video description. Our API application will require the integration of a database. There are generally two types of databases, a relational database such as MySQL and Postgres database, or no SQL solution such as using MongoDB. So having a database in the development environment is gonna be crucial for us to connect our application to and then for us to manage our data effectively. Now we have decided to utilize Postgres SQL, which is an open source relational database management system. So that is what we're going to be utilizing to build our database and our tables. It is known for a robust feature set, reliability and extensibility. So it provides us all the tools that we're going to need to build and manage a database. Now our first option is to install Postgres database on our computer. So we can do that. You can go ahead to the Postgres database, download Postgres and install it onto your machine. For a lot of people, installing applications onto their own machine isn't necessarily an ideal situation. So Docker is a container technology, which can be described as a platform and tool chain that can simplify the process of building, distributing and running applications using containerization technology. Now, you don't need to know any details really about Docker at this point. Uh, we're going to be utilizing Docker to host our Postgres database. Ultimately, that means that we don't need to go through the process of installing Docker onto our own machine. That's going to save us a lot more time. It's going to be a lot more flexible for us to uh, install a Postgres database into a container, a Docker container, and work with that Postgres database within a Docker container while we're developing the application. So very much like the benefits of using a virtual environment here on the left hand side with our project, the Docker container is going to provide isolation. It's going to provide consistency when we uh, generate our container. It's a simplified setup. And in addition to that, it provides portability. So we can share this, I say container with other developers, or we can run this container on our machine and then maybe we're working on another computer so we can then easily run that container again. So there's no having to install Postgres on all of our machines. We can just containerize Postgres database and then potentially share that between the different maybe machines that we're working on to develop our application or of course share it with other developers. It might not be clear at this point exactly what's going on in regards to creating a Docker container for Postgres database, but once you start utilizing Docker, you might start to see the benefit as a developer. So having said that, before you start, you will need to install Docker Desktop if you haven't already done so. So to install Docker Desktop, I won't go through the whole process, but you just need to navigate over to docker.com, go over to products, look for Docker Desktop, and then go ahead and download for Windows or Mac or Linux, and then just go through the installation process. It should be very much a next, next, next process. And at the end of that, you should, should have Docker Desktop installed and we can continue from here. Now that we have Docker Desktop open, there are two features that we need to understand, images and containers. Think of an image, which we download from Docker Hub as a snapshot or blueprint of a file system and the application it contains. So here you can see I've downloaded the Postgres uh, image from Docker Hub, the official Postgres image. And inside of that, essentially everything that's needed to run a Postgres database. So to actually run it, what we need to do is we need to create a container from this image. So a container is a doc in Docker, is a lightweight runnable instance of our Docker image. So we download the image, which has everything we need to run Postgres, and then we run it as a container. So to summarize, we need to build a Postgres database container. So we're going to need to specify that and how we can do that is utilizing a Docker Compose file. Now this is just one approach, but because we are going to be building multiple services, multiple containers, we're going to be utilizing a Docker Compose file. 
If we were just to create a uh, Postgres container, a single container, we might consider using a different approach. So just using a Docker file, for example. But here, like I said, we're going to be creating multiple containers. So we can use a Docker Compose file. So I right click or create a new file here in our project. I'm going to call this Docker Compose. Dot, and this is a YAML file. And inside of here, I'm going to detail all these services, all the containers that I want to create. So I start off with specifying the syntax, the version of syntax that we're going to be utilizing. I think the latest is 3.9 as of recording. And then what I need to do is define the services or the containers I want to create. So I want to create a database container. So I define the service name as DB. And then at this point, I need to define the image that I want to use. A quick introduction to the Docker hub, hub.docker.com. This is where we're going to be downloading the images. So we specify what image we want to use, in this case, a Postgres image. This is where it's going to originate from. So if I use the search here to search for Postgres, you can see that we're going to be utilizing a Postgres database. It has over a billion downloads. So it's quite a popular image. And if I scroll down here, you notice that like any software, typically it gets updated. So the latest version as of recording here is 16.1. Now there are multiple versions I can download of this. There are lighter weight packages or images, so Alpine, Bullseye, and then you can just go for the, the full scale, which would include all features and functionality. So here I'd be looking at maybe downloading just 16.1, for example. So there are different versions. We're going to be downloading the Alpine version, which is a slightly slim or lightweight version of Postgres. So it is a smaller image. Ideally, we want to always work with a, a smaller image if possible. Right, so we're going to go for Postgres. Uh, we could use 16. Um, actually, let's just double check. So the current version of Alpine is 16, uh, 16.1 Alpine, 3.19. So we'll go for that. So the version we're looking for is going to be 16.1. One, we want the Alpine version. And currently that is 3.19. So that's the image that we're going to be utilizing to create our container. Now, should the container fail for some reason, we always want it to restart. So let's go always. So if the container does fail or, or something happens to the Docker service, it's just going to try and restart the image. This image that we're downloading, like I said, it has all the essentials to get the Postgres database started in a container, but we will want to add potentially some different settings when we create the container, when we run our Postgres database in that container. So we will want to potentially pass over instructions, um, which will maybe change the setup in the container or, or make some sort of change. Now, something that we will want to set is some environment variables, because of course, this is software, this is a database. Um, we will need to secure it in some way. So we will need to specify a username and password. So we're going to pass in the Postgres uh, user variable or environment variable. So you can check out the actual documentation for all the different environment variables. Uh, so Postgres user. So we're going to create a new user called uh, Postgres. Nothing amazing here. And then we go for a Postgres uh, password. So we set up the password, let that equal uh, Postgres. OK. Now, it's not ideal to place a username and password in the Docker Compose file, but let's just get this started to begin with, and then we can build on top of this baseline code. OK, so now to think about uh, what happens when we run the container. So when we run the container, we are going to need to access the container from our application. So we're going to need to open up a port so that we can actually access into the container. So we're going to map port number 532 on our own computer, <laughs> five, sorry, 432 on our own computer. And we're gonna map that across to the container port, which is 5432. So that opens up a port in our container so that we can pass messages through that port over to our database which resides in the Docker container. 
So any message we send from our application, our Flask app, is going to be sending a message to the database via this port. Okay, so to manage our database, we're going to be using a, a service, an application called AdMiner. Now there are plenty of other tools that we could use to administrate our database. This is just nice and simple. So we need to download the image from Docker Hub, which is going to be AdMiner. And then let's go ahead and restart this always, just in case there's any issues. And we need to open up ports again. So this time uh, we're going to use a separate port because we can't use two ports or we can't use two same ports for two different services. So let's go for 8080. So we we'll map that across, open that port so we can access this uh, software to administrate our database using a graphical user interface. So do make sure that you follow the indentation that I've used here. So you can see that we have services and then we have one indentation level um, to the service names and then another indentation level to the attributes or details within um, that particular service that we're developing. When we run this file, we will find that Docker will check and inspect our code base. If there are any problems, it will let us know. So let's see if we can run this file now and actually create our Docker container. Now we can see that I've uh, emptied my Docker uh, desktop now. I don't have any images or containers. So go ahead and open up your terminal and then we're going to type in Docker uh, version. Let's just make sure that Docker is installed. So we have version 25.0. Don't worry if you've got a different version than what you can see here. But just to check to make sure that Docker is installed. If you have just installed Docker, it might be that you need to restart the machine or uh, restart uh, your applicate the Visual Studio Code application here um, for it to pick up in the terminal. Right, so once that's done, we go ahead and run Docker Compose. And then what we're gonna do is just run, we can run build. Um, that will build what we've defined here within our Docker file, or we can just run up, which is going to build and then actually start our container. So let's go ahead and run uh, up. Okay, so you can see here that we're told that there is a problem. So Docker Compose YAML file, service DB, additional property port is not allowed. So the problem we've got here is that I've named this incorrectly. So it does identify or it does try and help identify any issues or problems in your code like I specified. That was just a small example, I promise. I didn't make a mistake there. And then let's go ahead and run that again. So this time you can see now it's downloading the images from Docker Hub, AdMiner and the Postgres database. So that's going to take a few seconds to download depending on your internet speed. And now when we navigate back to Docker desktop here, which I can zoom in a bit, you can now see that we have two images. So the AdMiner and Postgres database. And you can see it's in use because what's happened, we've used up, which means that it has now created an instance of those images and created containers. So this is our containers. So I can drop down here. You can see we have two containers running, the AdMiner and the database. If there were any problems actually starting any of these services, the container icon here, um, that's green would be red. So that would indicate whether there was a problem or not. And what we could do is just click into that container and we could, it will provide us additional information which can be helpful to debug the problem. Right, so we're gonna be utilizing AdMiner to administrate our database. Like I said, it is a very simple user interface which will connect to our database so that we can view our tables and possibly make any changes to the data in the database tables. So it is running on port 8080. So all we need to do in the browser, is just type in 127.0.0.1. That's the loopback address, colon 8080. Okay, so that's the, oh, that's what we're gonna need there. And that's what we're presented with. So we're going to need to select a Postgres database. The server is gonna be DB. So this is a reference point. If we go back here, this is a reference point to the code base where we define the service name as DB. If you remember here, we've named a service DB. So that's the server. The username was Postgres. That's what we've defined in the Docker Compose file. The password is the same, Postgres. 
and the database, I think it's going to be Postgres to begin with. So let's log in. Um, not now. And you can see we've now logged in. So we're now actually accessing the database in our Postgres database service. Now, there isn't much here to um, talk about at this point, but the main point is you're able to actually access your database, database at this point. And now we can go ahead and make some additional changes. Right, so a few little tips to help us understand how to manage these containers and images and uh, work with Docker Desktop in general. Now, what you can't do is you can't delete images um, if there are containers running from those images. So that's an important point to make. So if you do want to remove any images, you would need to, first of all, delete any containers first. So that's the first thing that you need to consider. If you would like to replicate the environment again, you simply just run the command that we just did. But what you'll probably notice is that the up command we used previously, um, you can see that we will have um, access to the terminals for all of our services. So what you see here with this code is the actual terminal of the containers we just made. So you'll be able to look for errors and problems. That can be useful. At the same time, uh, in the development environment, that might not be something you want to see. So what you can do is run this in the background, so to speak. Uh, so when you press up, you can use the D flag. And what that means is we won't get any details um, from those two different containers within this terminal. You can still access the details. So if we go into the containers that we've just recreated, by moving to the container, you can go and inspect, go to the logs uh, and take a look at issues and problems still, if you want to um, access that. By using the D flag, it just creates a, a cleaner terminal when we're still developing and we just want the services running in the background. 